Coming up on Friday night, it is Battlegrounds MMA. Of course, you're going to be able to, to listen to myself and Dustin Poirier call these fights live on Fight TV. If you are in, within a 72-mile radius of Tampa, these fights will be blacked out. But if you're outside of that radius, you can watch these fights on Fight TV for $19.99. We're now joined by one of the men that's going to be a part of this card, Brad Taylor, who, if you are a watcher of the History Channel, you're probably very familiar with Brad in terms of his appearance on the Axman show, which Brad, I got to tell you, I was, until I started researching you, I had no idea about this television show. So how did you get involved in this? I mean, it's pretty wild, man. I, I grew up on the rivers my whole life. Um, if anybody's any kind of, if known about the television show, there's always a drama there uh, between the father and son back in the day. And uh, I was on the river and they come by and I'm like, what is going on here? You know, you got, I'm a country boy, you know, you don't really see much cameras going on, and there was two or three boats going down the river all filming this one boat, and I'm like, well, that's somebody important right there. You know, I knew right then that <laughs> something was going on, and I ended up laughing and talking with them, and I was like, yeah, man, you grew up on the river. You know anything about deadhead logging? And I was like, no, nah, man, I uh, I don't. Well, they're like, well, we got a lot of problems going on with the father and son. Maybe when you get a little break, I'll let you come out and you can be a part of the show. And I was like, well, heck, I'll, I'll try it out, you know. So I tried it out, and I actually did very well at it and did five years with them. Well, that, that, that's uh, an interesting story. And also, I saw an interview you, you did uh, previously where you talked about the fact of you, you really feel like that is – has helped you get used to cameras. Obviously, being MMA fighter, there's cameras all around. I mean, is it one of those things? Do you feel that, you know, some guys, when they start getting into television fights where kind of the, the bright lights gets to them? Oh, definitely, man. When you when you sit back and you watch it on television, you know, and you sit back and, and think about how easy it is, you know, um, I, I thought the same until there was that moment where there's a camera like, five inches from your face and they're like don't look at the camera you're like how, how am I going to do that you know you're all up in my face you know so of course the first year actually was a very good struggle with that you know because you it got so bad to where like they had to tell me what to say at first because like you would think of something and then you would think so hard well man am I going to mess up and you stutter and you mess up and you got to cut it 20 times you know so then we worked on writing down notes because that it's a dim it's a definitely a big part in you know thinking about what you're going to say what's going to happen so it's definitely helps with my mma you know helpness you know I, the axe man slowed down a little bit i haven't done it in about two years but going around and being on you know with some cameras around on these fights which has been there before it's definitely helped me a lot with that and, and i thought i heard you say something very interesting that I don't think I've ever heard a fighter when you were talking about your amateur career where you said amateur you view it as like you were going to college and that's why you had that's the right. amount of amateur fights that you had. Was that something that someone had said to you or is that just something that just you thought of? I mean, it sounds crazy, you know, cause you got a, you got a picture telling your mother you're going to be an MMA fighter. You know, I mean, it's something different uh, telling, you know, rather you grow up fighting or not. Um, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta talk in your wife, your, you know, your mother, you know, you know, Hey, you know, why are you doing this? You know, well, you know, you know I'm, I'm going to college, you know, that's how I would put that. You know, I just, it kind of hit me one day is, is when you're an amateur fighter, you're pretty much going to college, you know, to go into the UFC, the Bellator, the professional league, you know, I mean, same thing as a football player, you know, um, I'm friends with, Greg Jenkins and a couple other NFL football players that grew up in my area. And, uh, you know, they had to go to college, you know, and, and learn and practice and practice. And when you get dropped in the real world and, and, you know, the NFL or professional league, it's a big difference, you know? So no, that's just, man, that's just how I, you know, I told my mom, you know, she's like, you know, this is crazy. You know, of course she hasn't missed one since. Um, and knock on wood, I've never really been too badly hurt except one fight. I had a pretty good cut on the back of my head, but, you know, that's how I would state it. You know, why are you being amateur this long? You know, I had 40 amateur fights because, you know, I'm sitting there learning. I'm learning every day. I didn't. I wasn't like a lot of these other kids that, you know, their mom and dad pay for them to do whatever. It wasn't like that with mm -hmm. me, you know. I had to learn by getting my butt into that gym or getting my butt in that cage. I fought 
I fought 10 times, 20 times amateur before I even stepped in the gym one time. Uh, and then somebody grabbed a hold of my arm, and I'm like, what is this guy doing? You know, I'm like, shit, that hurt. You know, <laughs> what is he doing? You know, and then I found out what jiu-jitsu was, you know. <laughs> I didn't I didn't go to the gym. I couldn't do that a lot because I, I had a family, and I worked for a living growing up. You know, it was kind of difficult to jump in and out of the gym and stuff. So, so I just kind of fought all the time, you know, and that was my college was going and fighting as an amateur. So what's your wife think about you being a fighter? It really isn't so bad. Um, knock on wood, out of, dang, 65 or 64 fights in a cage, I've only had a – I've never had a black eye. I've never had a, you know, maybe a little bit of a busted lip, you know, but I've never really been too badly injured, you know. I'm usually – it usually works out pretty good, so it's not been a dramatic scene except about four fights ago I uh, – I got clipped pretty good in the side of my head, and it bled really good across my face, you know, and that kind of freaked everybody out. Um, I lost five in a row, man. So that's 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 where you, um, you know, become a man. That's where you become if this is something you want to do when everybody around you is kind of like, damn, you know, give up. You know, you've lost five in a row, you know. And I almost did at that time, but my wife was there like, hey, you know, shit, Brad, we've been doing this so long. You're going to – let five wins or five losses in a row, you know, mm-hmm. let you stop, you know? And so she does really well with it. You know, I mean, she's been around before the ax man, before the fighting, you know, so she usually does pretty good with it. When you think about that, that time frame of when, you know, you had those losses in a row, how, how was it, how, how is your mindset in, in terms of fighting different now as opposed to back then? Well, you know, when I was amateur, you know, I gave zero Fs, you know, like mm-hmm. I didn't care when I was an amateur. I was very ruthless. Um, I I always smiled and I want to meet my opponent. But then when that cage door shuts, you know, I'm there to I'm there to hurt you. I'm there to take your soul, you know, and that's how I was amateur. And that's why I was so successful. You know, I've beaten very top notch guys. There's some of them are in the UFC that I've beaten. And, um, it, you know, you. You get caught up when you turn. When I turned pro, my whole level of training stepped up to being like training five, six hours a day. When I turned pro, I didn't even work. I was making plenty of money just being a fighter, and I quit my job and I had everything in the palm of my hand, um, and I took it for granted. You know, I took it for uh, of of a different kind of level in my mind to where I trained all the time, and instead of going in there, you know following your knuckles up, biting down in your mouthpiece and going to war, I went in there, you know, oh, one, two, three, you know, this is what I've been practicing with these professionals, you know, and you go in there and get choked out or, you know, you go three rounds, next thing you know, the fight's over and you've lost, you know, or, you know, it's just, you know, I had a bad part of, I had a lot of people telling me to fight at 170 and uh, I'm a country ass eating man. I is not made for me. 170 is not made for somebody that likes to eat food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I got caught up in listening to everybody else. I went up and trained with like Ben Henderson at the lab and, you know, and them guys up there like, man, you're a big boy. Once you fight at 170, you know? And so I would, you know, die. I would like literally have seizures after weigh-ins like, cause I was fighting at 170 walking around at 200 pounds. That, that shit ain't healthy. You know? I mean, yeah. It wasn't for me, you know, and I ended up losing some and, you know, just, man, my, you know, people say that, you know, oh, you train the hardest to be the best. You could bring, you could train as hard as you want to, man. But if your mind's not right, you're nobody. You're all your training is gone. You know, your mind has to be right to be in that cage. So that's mainly the main thing of, if mindset's different now, you know, my mindset different now is, I lost five in a row, man. I had, you want to talk, I'm looking in the mailbox for checks and shit. You know, where is my sponsors at? You know, holy <laughs> shit, where's everybody going, you know? Everybody started disappearing, you know? You really start finding out who your friends are, you know? Um, and that really takes a lot out of a man, especially with two kids and a wife that, you know, my, my wife don't work. You know, I take care of my family, you know? So you lose five in a row, you know, shit kind of changes on you. You know, people start forgetting about you people oh well you know he was bad to the bone amateur you know and got three wins in a row pro and he lost it all you know lost five in a row you know it'll change you you know so that's either you're gonna either you know you're gonna say hey i'm done with this man which is was there you know i question myself every day you know 
just quit this shit, man. You're 26 years old. You got two kids and a wife, you know, and, you know, you just, I took a break, you know, like a three month break and uh, started getting fat, you know, and I'm like, this is not me, man. You five years of college, get your ass up and go back and whoop some butt, you know? And, um, it, that's just how it happened, man. I went in there, bit down on my mouthpiece and I bring it to you every time now. Um, and it's hard to deal with, you know, it's, you know, it's hard to deal with, you know, so my mind game is just totally different and totally better after them five losses. I really found out who my friends were and they weren't. Um, and it really takes the, you know, being broke and, and trying to survive and getting your dreams crushed on is, uh, is not something that is nice and not something that's good. So I take that aggression out and regardless what's on my mind, when I'm back there getting my hands wrapped, I think about getting my ass whooped five times in a row in front of my wife. That shit ain't fun, you know? <laughs> you get tired of that stuff pretty quick. Yeah, you mentioned about the time, I mean, the short time you took off, but you have an opponent here who went five years without a fight. He had a fight back in December, but prior to that, he had not fought since 2011. Um, as you prepare for this fight, do you see a much different fire that fought back in December as opposed to his fights, uh, you know, in 2009, 2010, 2011? I'll be honest with you, man. I, I don't pay him no mind. Um, I run a full business, man. I have a family. Um, I just look at him as another opponent. I don't study him much. Mm -hmm. I know he's a wrestler. Um, I have a coach that kind of, you know, directs me now and says, okay, well, this is what we need to do, and this is what we don't need to do. Um, but one thing that I know that I'm going to do regardless is bring it. You know, I'm coming for you. Um I don't really care what your game plan is because it might be a little different when I hit you in the face or I try to take you down, you know. So I've had some really good plans before, but when I'm in that fight, they usually will change a little bit, you know. <laughs> and, and of course, Much of a fight plan in there. And, of course, for the fans that are, are not in the Tampa Bay area, they can watch us on Fight TV. What would you say to those fans that are, that are living outside Tampa Bay of why they should uh, tune in on Friday night and watch you fight on Fight? I'm um, just, man, you know, Pay attention to this stuff, man. Always support your fighters. You know, if you believe in them or anything like that, just support them, you know. Uh, y'all, Fans and stuff like that, that's what we do for this for, you know. We, we do this for that love and support of it y'all have for us. Uh, so if, you know, you you have any friends or family that's in it, you know, push them forward and, and stay directed whether they win or lose because it's going to happen regardless. Um, just, you know, stay positive and definitely tune in, man. I uh, – you want to talk about somebody that's been down in the dumps before, uh, losing five fights in a row, and somebody now that's on a great winning streak and uh, really don't have no cares anymore to just bring it to the bring it to you, you know. So, um, you want to see an exciting fight? Definitely watch mine. I'm either gonna get choked out or something, but something's gonna happen fun. It ain't gonna be no boring fight. I'll tell you that. And of course, you'll be able to listen to my, myself and Dustin Poirier call these fights. Brad, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Anywhere my listeners can follow you at on social media. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a uh, Facebook. I got a uh, Brad the Axeman Taylor dot com. I have a website and then you can also follow me on Facebook, Brad Taylor or Brad the Axeman Taylor. Um, just stay in contact, man. If you want to follow a fun, exciting fighter, come on, like my page and I stay posted on it and let you know what my next fight will be.